When I reviewed the Allo Digi1 SPDIF board for the Raspberry Pi, I was impressed by the high quality SPDIF signal it offers. Allo also has a board that supposedly outputs comparable audio grade signals to USB DACs. If so, that would be the solution for owners of a DAC that only has a USB input. The Allo US Bridge differs from the Digi1 in that it doesn't work with a Raspberry Pi but needs a single board computer made by Allo called the Sparky. There are a number of differences between the Sparky and the Raspberry Pi. It has a slightly different processor but that's hardly interesting. An important difference is that where the Raspberry Pi shares the USB bandwidth between the four USB ports and a network adapter, the Sparky uses separate lanes for the two USB ports and the network. A second difference is that it can hold an eMMC memory card that is about 75% faster than a comparable microSD card. But if you want to use a microSD card, there is a slot for that too. Furthermore, an adapter to use the eMMC card in a microSD slot is provided for if you want to install a different image on it. Obviously, the Sparky is less widely supported than the Pi, but if you buy it for this function only, that is of no consequence. Allo offers a complete set that includes the Sparky computer, the US bridge interface, a 16GB eMMC drive, an acrylic case and a simple 5 volt switching mode power supply. On ordering you can specify what software you want, Volumio or DietPi. For Volumio see my review for more information, the link is in the show notes. DietPi is software that installs your choice of optimized software for this hardware. The list of programs to choose from is immensely long and contains, amongst others, Squeezelight, SharePlay, Plex, Kodi, Icecast and Runebridge. But you could also have it install all kinds of desktops, BitTorrent programs and so on. Since I am about music, I had Runebridge, Squeezelight and SharePoint installed. This way I can play from Rune, from Logitech Media Server and over AirPlay from my iPhone which I do for podcasts. To set things up you need to temporarily connect the monitor, keyboard and mouse. You also have to permanently connect the network cable and then connect the power supply. You could use a power supply connected to the Sparky, to the US bridge board or both. Check the manual for instructions about setting a jumper. Since I don't like cheap switching mode power supplies near my stereo set, I use the iFi iPower 5V wallboard. This is also a switching mode power supply, but since it pr is properly filtered, it's just as silent as an affordable linear power supply, but at a lower price. It was connected to the US bridge board. The thing you see on the screen is a lot of alphabet soup. Wait until the scrolling stops and you see a message telling you the username and password. Type the username, give enter, type the password and enter again. You are now logged in and can start DietPi Launcher by simply typing DietPi-Launcher. That will open an old fashioned looking menu. Select DietPi Software and you will be presented with a long list of programs you can install. You select them by typing the spacebar and then choose OK by using the arrow keys left or right. Then select Install followed by OK and your selection of software will be installed. After a reboot a slim version of Linux will run the programs you chose. It admittedly is not the most elegant user interface but it does the job and it does it easier than manual installation unless you are a Linux geek. As said, I installed Rune Bridge so I had to enable the US Bridge in Rune. It named itself after the DAC that was connected to the special audio USB on the USB bridge. In my case Meridian Explorer 2 and MyTech Brooklyn. If you are a Squeezebox fan and have installed Squeezelight, the US Bridge will pop up automatically. SharePoint will advertise the US Bridge on the network as DietPi and you can easily reroute the sound of any iOS device or Mac in the network to it. 
Have you installed a DNLA client? That will pop up in the DNLA controller software hardware. If your stereo only has SPDIF inputs, you should use the Allo Digi1. Let me stress again that it is impossible to give absolute advice. That is why I use the three reference sets to give a cause indication. The USB bridge sounds enormously better than the USB output on the Raspberry Pi. Since I now have the SOTM SMS200 Ultra in my reference set 1, I no longer have the standard SOTM SMS200, so I can't make a direct comparison. But the USB bridge is very close to it. It is especially in the lows that I remember the SMS200 to perform even better. Having said that, the USB bridge would have made me very happy only 18 months ago and I would have described it as the best I have ever heard up till now. That much has happened over the last 18 months. Sure, the SMS200 is better, though that comes at a cost. The complete US bridge will set you back about 180 euros, two and a half times less than the SMS200. In both cases I would at least add the iFi power supply costing 50 euros. For my setup 1 I, would, I wouldn't go for the US bridge, not even with an S booster power supply, but there the SMS200 was even surpassed by the SMS200 Ultra that cost even 7 times the price of the US bridge set. Having said that, if I had to, I could absolutely live with it in my 20k costing reference set 1 for it is free of nasties. It just doesn't achieve the resolution I know now is possible. It is not that detailed, has less well defined lows and sounds less free, less relaxed. But it's so much better than the Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus Pro that preceded the SMS200. In my reference set 2 I will certainly use the US bridge. This set more or less represents the average stereo of a music lover at about 3000 euros. It also means that it will certainly be great in reference set 3. See the link in the show notes for details. The US bridge is about the quality of the Digi1, but a warning is in place. Some decks sound better with SPDIF while others sound better using USB. That has to do with the quality of the digital input circuits in the DAC. The better the quality of the digital signal, the less difference there is between SPDIF and USB. I prefer the US bridge on the MyTech Brooklyn DAC and the Digi1 on the Cord Yuga. Please allow me to reiterate that the quality of digital audio has immensely improved over the last years. This partly has to do with the transition to network audio since real time reading of CD or SACD is not without its problems. Bits are better handled by information technology provided the last part of the signal path is isolated from the noisy IT environment. That is what devices like this do. They use IT technology that can easily handle the job at hand and filter the remaining noise and provide a cleanly clogged digital audio signal. It is mostly known technology now and Allo is the first to understand that people will pay for higher quality digital signals coming from a small board computer. Talent and persistence of the developing team does the rest. The Allo developers did a very good job here, as they did with the Digi1. According to my contact with Allo there is more to come so if you want to stay informed subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter. Facebook or Google Plus. See the show notes for the links. If you have a question, post it below this video but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my About Questions video to find out why. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen. Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>